thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me well? Uh, okay, I want just to apologize for my accent. I am Brazilian. I live in Portugal and I work in the US. So <laughs> it's, it's not very, very easy. So if you do not understand, please just raise your hands and I'll be more than happy to repeat for you. Okay. So, uh, just, I just want to in introduce Hendrik, uh, said about a little bit about Brightline, but I want just to explain, uh, a little bit more about my personal journey and why I'm leading this initiative. So, um, I noticed that probably most of the public here uh, comes from technology, uh, but I come from a different, so I'm a chemical engineer and I work, uh, I used to work mostly on capital projects. Uh, let's say oil refinery, platform, uh, power plants, mining, uh, and I built my career on that, on mostly on the project management side. Okay. So I work it a lot on the project management side on delivering this kind of infrastructure projects. Uh, and I, at that time I lived, uh, in Brazil. And in 2012, I received a very interesting invitation. Uh, and I became the first director for project management at the United Nations. So I moved to Denmark and I worked for four years and a half using the same skills that I built, uh, in my, in the business side, uh, in the humanitarian side. So I was uh, responsible for a team of a little bit over a thousand people doing the operational work of the UN. So what do I mean by that? Building roads, building uh, refugee camps, uh, organizing logistics, uh, and, and some of them, uh, this, this works you, you know, because for example, my team was responsible for the removal of the chemical weapons in Syria. I'm saying the removal, not the political decision. I'm saying you go, you enter, you take, you leave. And, and this, uh, was, yeah, yeah, this is a very, very, uh, uh, nice and, and different work. So I had this experience. And then uh, when I decided to leave the UN, I said, um, how I can connect these two things? And this is one of the key reasons why I'm here today and why I'm, I'm spending this time with you talking to you about Brightline. First, Brightline is not a company. Brightline is not a business and Brightline does not want to sell absolutely anything. We want to increase the awareness of people on one very simple topic. If you take a look on this number, one million dollars, and, and if we ask, what, what does this mean? Of course, I, I assume that probably all of you will say it's a lot of money, right? But let me add one thing. This is the money that the world loses every 20 seconds due to the lack of ability of putting ideas to work. This is based on the G7 research, and this is just a massive amount of waste. This is around 4 billion US dollars in one day, 2 trillion in a year. And just to put this into perspective, this is the GDP of Brazil, my native country. So, what happens and what is the base and the root of, of Brightline? It's how we can work in order to reduce this amount. And, and this is not, again, only to improve business and improve profit. In a world that we face such a dramatic inequality, it's irresponsible to let this happen. Right, so every single of you can tell me so many cases of failure that if we add up, you will see, you will face an incredible number. So Brightline was created exactly for that. So it's a non-commercial coalition of leading organizations. So we decided 
to put together a set of organizations to work together to connect two things. To connect the strategy, design, and delivery. This is in a more formal way. But in a very informal way, it's to bring ideas to life. Okay? Bring ideas to life. And to do that, we do basically three key pillars. If you go to our website, you'll see this. So we support and promote research. And one of them I will share with you today that we did last year. And this year we are doing research with MIT, with the University of Tokyo, with the Danish Technology University, with Harvard Business Review and Quartz Creative. Just this year, all of them will be released this year. Okay. The second is networking and awareness. And this is the reason why I am here. So we are sponsoring, participating and actively engaging in several uh, events, in several round tables to increase the awareness, to make people think about this second side. For example, it's, it's very common that we we think a lot about strategy, right? We think about how the future will look like, right? When we think about uh, AI, we, we wonder to see how this will look like in four years from now, five years, but not on your own perspective, but in a more global perspective, so your organization can benefit from that. And then probably at the end, you produce a paper, you produce something, that you call this strategy, right? And what happened most of the time? On your journey from paper to reality, things change, right? And most of the time, when you arrive at the end line, you don't know even how you started, right? And this happens for governments, organizations, so we are in, in the most relevant tables today trying to discuss this. We were at Davos at the World Economic Forum on 23rd of January this year, trying to talk with the CEO of organizations. Because you will see, and I will talk very soon about that. They don't believe that they are responsible for delivering this strategy. They believe that they are responsible for envisioning the future of their business but not delivering that feature. So how we can change that? And the third one is capability building. So we are promoting and, and trying to increase the capability of people to understand that. And, and this is the first time I talk publicly about that because it was signed this morning. Uh, Coursera will release a Brightline course September 1st this year absolutely free. So just to give you an idea, Brightline is already fully funded. So everything we do, it's for free in Creative Commons. So you can download, use, reuse, and, and benefit from that. So who is behind uh, a Brightline? As Kendrick said, the Project Management Institute, Agile Alliance, Boston Consulting Group, Bristol Myers Cube, the pharmaceutical company, Saudi Telecom in, in Saudi Arabia, Lee Hatch Harrison, one of the main leading consulting organizations in HR and HR human resource reform. And uh, members of our coalition on the academic side, the Global Teamwork Lab of the University of Tokyo, the Technical University of Denmark, the MIT Consortium for Engineering Program Excellence, and the blockchain research initiative, okay? So probably uh, very soon, two other members will join the coalition uh, on the government side and also the not-for-profit side, okay? So now let's go back to the research and let's try to find this. So if you go to brightline.org, you can download this, this report there, okay? And you can see, but how we can close the gap between the design and the delivery of strategy. So the first thing that this, this uh, study presented to us, 
90% of their senior executives. We interviewed 500 senior executives. Okay, when I say senior executive, I'm saying one level below the CEO of the organization. So usually the person responsible for translating the strategy into action. 90%. And I'm not saying that one failed. I'm saying that nine out of 10 failed. So it's a massive failure rate. The second thing, it's only 20% of all strategic, sorry, 20% of all strategic initiatives fail due to one reason, poor implementation. So there is just a gap. And if I tell you about my, my life, going back to my United Nations life, Let's try to understand this. So probably most of you do not know exactly how the UN operates. But let me give you in 30 seconds. There is one big arm that is called Secretariat. That is based in New York on that very famous building. The Secretariat is where the strategy is created. It's where the Security Council sits together and say, Let's do this, or let's do that, or let's implement refugee camps in Turkey, or let's implement, uh, for example, uh, an aid, an aid track, uh, to, for the Islamic State going to, for the, the victims of the Islamic State go through Iraq, the Kurdistan, Kurdish Iraq. So what do they do most of the time? They approve a piece of paper that is called a resolution, right? Then after that, they send a fax or an email to us on the other side. And we have just a simple task of do it, right? Do it. And it's a nightmare. Because most of the time, there is a complete disconnection between the scenario where the ideas were created and the reality on the field. You, you say something like that. Oh, it's very simple. We need just to remove two million people from this region and move to this region. How do you think about doing that? How? How do you think you put all of them in a line and you start walking? So how things happen? How? For example, one of the biggest challenges in Kurdistan with all this, this conflict, it's imagine a city with 5,000 people that receive 300,000 people in three days. What happens with electricity? Water. Supplies. What happens? Suddenly, there is nothing. So you need to prepare. Otherwise, you just migrate physically the problem. So how do you operate? Just to give you an idea, on this operation, we had to move 35 containers from the border of Iran to bring electricity through solar panel to put on the refugee camps. Imagine the logistics for doing that. So this is exactly the gap we are trying to, to, to discover here and to discuss. So why we should care about that? So why this became so important? So 59% of senior executives say that the organization struggled to bridge that. And let me tell you, do you know one of the key reasons? It's because... It's not fancy, the execution. What is fancy is the idea. One of the key partners of Brightline last year and this year is TED. Is TED. So what we are doing with TED? We are sponsoring and supporting them because TED is one of the most powerful houses of ideas, right? All of you watched some of the TED Talks, the guy with a very crazy idea that will change everything. Have you come back 
to the same guy four years later and said, what happened with your magic idea of a robot that will do MRI inside your body and, and leave and it will cost one cent? What happened? Why? Because transform and translating ideas into reality. It's not easy at all. And it's not a problem of only agility. It's a problem of the full understanding of the problem. You that work as developed because I am most of the time on the other side. Do you know how do I talk to the developers on my team? I say, I have something very easy for you to do. It's very simple. I can do myself. And then I deliver to you a real nightmare, right? Because I don't know. Because on the abstract idea, things are simple. Right? But the reality is much harder than what we think. So look, that's 59%. So all these numbers are massive numbers. So look, another perspective. I started saying about $1 million every 20 seconds. Now I want to show you another number. So look, uh, the global infrastructure outlook, okay, say that the global investment up to 2040. So this is 22 years. So it's quite a short uh, uh, range. 94 trillion US dollars. And energy, telecom, airports, port, rails, roads, water. 18.8 trillion is pot will be potentially wasted in 20 years. It's one American economy in one year. So this is a massive destruction of wealth. Another thing that we did a, a quick research and I invited you to do the same. Put the word strategy on Google or put the word strategy on Harvard Business Review, for example, and try to look for articles and content. You will see that a massive development, a, a massive number of articles is around the development of strategy, innovation, how to think different, how to prepare your company for 10 years ahead, how to do that five forces of Porter, whatever you want to do. So everything is there. But when you talk about the execution and this bridge between this idea and the result, the numbers fall dramatically. So just to give you an idea, between January in September of last year, Harvard Business Review published more than a thousand papers. Six of them around the implementation and the delivery of strategy. So it means it's not even close to the radar of the senior leaders, right? It's not even close. So what leaders that did it right have differently? So look, what they call designing for delivery. So what is important if we compare the leaders with the low performance? First, they, when they are thinking, they are at the same time thinking about the ability to execute. Second, they consider the current ability to implement on the human side. For example, let, let me let me give you one example. We, we had a very nice discussions recently about self-driven cars. And let me tell you, I have no doubt that the technology will be ready very soon. And it will be completely reliable. And this. But what is the problem on that? What will be the organization, I'm saying when I say government, and ability to execute? What UPS will do with 60 
5,000 truck drivers only in the US. What they will do? They will just exclude them, fire them, and you will create a bigger gap. So how do you do that? Do you know one of the key topics I heard at the World Economic Forum was a sentence by the chairman of the forum. And do you know what he said? He said, we need to protect the technology guys against themselves. Because at some point, we'll reach a level of technology and efficiency, efficiency that we'll be able to do everything with nothing. And then what do you do with 7 billion people? What do you do with that? No, it's a very simple and fair question. What do you do with that? So I'm, I'm not, please, I'm not, I, I just want to improve the most of the very successful governments and organizations. They think about their ability to implement that. And they think in the whole scenario and not just one piece of the scenario. The third, designers and implementers, they collaborate effectively. It's not like a strategy is done in, in a room, lock it, and then someone just throw outside a piece of paper and then the others start running. So there is a very intertwined relationship between these two. And those who design the strategy actively oversight implementation. Let me ask you one thing. If you work in an organization, a big one with a strategy, a decent strategy, I want you now to remember not the current strategy, but the previous one, the strategy of three years ago. What, what's the problem? Most of the people are struggling to see and understand the current strategy. So imagine five years ago. So do you know what happened? People develop ideas. Let, let me be very brutal here, very aggressive. Oh my. People develop this, this strategy. People present this strategy to their shareholders. Receive funds, receive bonus. And then they give the strategy to someone else and then they start creating a new strategy because that one became obsolete. Right? Look, let me give you another example. The same thing on the public sector. This is why Brightline is not for organ public sector. Let let's translate the same thing I said. I want your vote. Okay? I want your vote. So what do I have? I have a plan of government, right? What is a plan of government? It's your strategy, right? And you will vote for me because you believe, oh, Ricardo has an interesting strategy. Ricardo thinks that we should move India to this direction, to this, so he will receive my vote, right? Then I get, I got elected. And then what happened most of the time? I do not deliver on the promises I made to you, right? I'm, I'm just, this is not India. This is everywhere. This is everywhere because it's hard. It's very easy to put things on paper. It's not very easy to take them from paper. Okay, so it's, th this is what I want to highlight here. Leaders act fast with discipline. So agility is on the core of the DNA of these leaders. They act fast. For example, agility to adjust the strategy when implementation reveals risks and opportunities. One of the key threats of people, and I work it a lot with startups, okay, a lot of with startups in my past uh, uh, as an investor and currently on, on some artificial intelligence and chatbots. The first thing you need to know is sometimes the market changes and you need to adapt quickly. 
Most of the time, one of the biggest challenges, I was with Steve Blank recently, and we were discussing that in a dinner. I, uh, he said to me, Ricardo, one of the biggest problems of startup is that you fall in love with your company. And then you become blind. Oh, the world has changed. But, but you are so passionate about that that you don't see. But leaders, they act fast. So if they see that, they adjust quickly. They are very fast on that. Second, they have agility to relocate personnel. And this is one of the biggest challenges. Because if you do a massive transformation in your organization, you may need different skills, right? And a set of new skills. So how you can be agile on that? And agility to relocate funds among different initiatives. So this is the pace you need to implement. So now I want just to show you a very quick video that we did, we produced with Ted before I share with you some of the principles. To build a great business strategy, we begin by asking questions. Okay. Can I press play? To build a great business strategy, we begin by asking questions. At the end of that process, we end up with answers. We point those answers at the future and we call it strategy. Case closed? Not quite. In a survey of leading global organizations, 9 of 10 respondents reported not achieving all of their strategic goals. That's a lot of missed marks, hundreds of millions of dollars worth. Perhaps strategies fail because when it comes time to execute, leaders aren't asking the right questions. Questions like, who's accountable for strategy execution? Are design and delivery siloed, or are they intertwined? Does strategy delivery connect back to strategy design? Do the people tasked with bringing it to life understand and agree with it? Is our strategy simple, bold, and focused? Are we flexible? Can we adapt to change? Does our plan account for rapid feedback from customers and competitors alike? Is this working? And if the answer is no, are we failing? Or are we failing to learn fast enough? Is business strategy only about finding the right answers? Or is it also about asking the right questions every step of the way? Now I want just to go to one uh, final piece of what I want to share with you, and, and for me the most relevant one. Uh, when we saw the results, and when we put together all these organizations, so pharmaceutical industry, together with telecom, different countries, different groups, we try to identify if we can give some advice, which would be this advice? And then we create what we're calling the 10 guiding principles, okay? So let me go through each of them very quickly, and you will see that several of them are related to behavior and are related to people. So the first one is you need to understand that the delivery is as important as the design. So when you sit together, uh, this is very common. I don't know here in India, but in Brazil, the new year, the 31st of December to the 1st of January, is the day where most of the people make their promises. Uh, I'm saying for themselves, I will keep smoking. I will do gym. I will find a new job. I will do whatever. Right? You, you try to do that. And then during the whole year, you try to implement it. And then at the end of the year, you promise everything again, right? So what is important, as strong as the promise, must be the delivery. The second, 
is that you are accountable for delivering the strategy you built. So, for example, if you are a senior leader on an organization and you decide, for example, that you should move your business, for example, you are Boeing, from aircraft to ships, let's suppose you decided you need to understand that you were responsible for delivering that. It's not just delivering the paper, but delivering on the promises you made. The third one, you need to have dedicated resources. You need to understand that you need to have the right resources to do that. And, and when I say right resources, I'm not saying quantity, but you need to have the right skills, the right mindset, the right behavior. So you need to have people taking care of that implement, uh, the implementation. Fourth, you cannot, this is why we put an eye, you cannot be blind. You need to leverage and see insights from your customer and your competitors. So what my competitor is doing, if I am a government, what other governments are doing? How are they treating the same challenge? For example, of immigration. How they are, so how I can leverage and find a common ground and understand. So uh, customers, for example, let me tell you one thing. I have two daughters, 18 and 14. And let me tell you one thing. Another day I was talking to my young one when she was 13. And I said, finally, you are 13 years old. You can have a Facebook account, right? It's 13. And I'm very strict on that. 13, you can have. Then she said, Dad, I don't want Facebook. Facebook is for old people. <laughs> but think on how powerful is what she said to me. Something that is pretty much brand new is perceived by she does not use. And let me tell you, none of their friends. So look how things, so if you are working on this, you need to understand how the customer will behave. My dream when I became six, 18 years old was to have a driver's license and be able to drive. This was my dream. What is happening today on the people that are turning 18? People don't care anymore about cars. They don't care. They care about other things. So if you don't face customer, you may create a strategy that is a challenge. So I was preparing myself to come here and I was watching Bloomberg television today. And there is an auto show and everybody is absolutely crazy about the last statement of President Trump on taxes on steel. And the president of Volvo and the president of Porsche were together on an interview saying that this could bump a massive uh, trade war that will, will, will reduce the growth of the world. But imagine you working on transformation in the auto industry. It's such a relevant topic that you need to stop now. You cannot wait three years. To see what will happen with your new car. So did you get? So it's critically important. Number five. Be bold. Stay focused and keep it as simple as possible. One of the things that I like most about Agile. Is that it's very simple. It's a very simple. You have the controls that only you need. You have an engagement with the team, but you need to be bold and keep the focus. Otherwise, if you do not keep the focus, what will happen? The chaos can be, can start to happen very fast. So you need to be bold and simple at the same time. You know, at the same time. Another one, number six. Promote engagement and effective cross-business cooperation. Let me translate that. This is very wordy. 
Let me translate this. You need to remove silos in the organization. Because let me tell you one thing. It's human behavior. If you read a, a, a book called Predictably Irrational from Dan Ariely, you will read what I will say to you now. People love to praise and, and say that we need to change. But people hate change. So you go to your company and say, how we are? Oh, we need to change everything. And then I reply to you and say, so let's start changing your area. No, no, not my area? No. No, my area is perfect. But you need to change, but no change. Did, did, you, did, did you get? Why? Because your personal interest is at the stake. So one thing that we are doing now, now in April 2nd, it's to meet very senior HR leaders in, in, in the U.S. to discuss how we can improve the, the, aware, the human awareness of change that so people cannot become an obstacle, but they can be supportive of that. So how we can do that? How we can leverage this? How we can create something that is not only beneficial for the company, but for the people inside the company, because you are a human being. Imagine that I want to make a transformation that will extinguish your area. What is your immediate reaction? How I will feed my family, right? And it's a completely fair reaction. So what do you do? You try to protect your silo. And this is why you don't cooperate. So how we can break this? How we can improve this human side? Seven, demonstrate bias towards decision making and own the decisions you make. Let me tell you one thing. Make decisions is hard. And do you know why? Because if you fail on your decision, you are responsible and people hate to be accountable. So what people do? They don't decide. So if you want to move and be successful, you need to demonstrate. So let me tell you, 95% of the decisions I did when I was at the UN, I didn't have the full information. At some point, I had to make a decision without seeing the full picture. And it's life. Read a book, another book I want to suggest you, read Malcolm Gladwell, a book called Blink. It's exactly about that. Because most of the time you want to have a perfect, you think that business and life is mathematics. It's not. Number eight, check ongoing initiatives before you commit to new ones. You know, you, you love to say yes, 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 and you are already overloaded. And then what happened? You are not able because you don't have capability. Let me tell you a huge massive opportunity for India. And because India is, okay, I, I know many uh, people from, from India. You are intellectually gifted. You are very smart. On the technology, ultra smart. And what I heard from Satya Nadella at the World Economic Forum in January, the tech industry needs 1.2 million new workers to continue the pace of growth. It's not a matter of money. And do you know what's happening today? They cannot grow the pie. So Apple hires from Google. Google hires from Oracle. Oracle goes back to Apple. So it's always the same people rotating because you don't grow the pie. So it's very, very important because you cannot move if you are completely overloaded by the current activities. Nine, develop robust plans. You, you need to have a, a decent roadmap, but allow missteps, fail fast to learn fast. The problem is not the failure. The problem is the pace you fail. Right? It's the pace you fail. So all the leading organizations, they are very successful on that because when they fail, they fail fast. They don't try to punish. Who fa they just move on very quick. Most of the time in traditional environments, they fail slowly. And it hurts a lot. You know, it takes 
years for you to recognize that you did something that was wrong. And last but not least, celebrate success with your team. One of the key components of the new workforce, of the new workforce, is not, if, you, if we go back to the 90s, most of the benefits were perceived in financial terms. Remember when the U.S. was increasing dramatically the people working on financial sector? Do you remember engineers, everybody moving to five because they pay, they paid very well, but their business ethics was in some ways challenging. So what is happening today with the new talent, with those leaving the university? Of course, they want money, but they want to do something that is meaningful. And, and, and if you do not address this, if you do not stop and celebrate the accomplishments that you did, and it's like a snowball, people tend to become demotivated and they leave. And if they leave, you have problems on several other principles. So how you can retain the best talent, how you can drive people to do the best and to be happy, not only by increasing their salary, but by creating other ways of motivating and celebrating success. So we created this stand. So if you go to our website now, you can download this, exactly this, and you can download more uh, documents uh, on that. Uh, Forbes is doing case studies with different companies on different principles, and we are producing one video for each principle, and we will produce a course of the, on these principles that will be available online that you can download and replicate with the slide deck and everything for you to do to do with your team inside your organization. Because these are the 10 fundamental principles. Am I saying something very different? No, probably most of them are very reasonable. What is not reasonable is our ability to do it. Right? We know, we all know what is the right thing to do most of the time. So why we don't do that? Because it's not easy. Because it's not easy. And this is why Brightline is putting a massive effort on that. A massive. So if you read The Economist magazine, you see at The Economist, every single week we are there. We are sponsoring TED, Davos. We, we are everywhere, trust me, trying to, you know, to plant the seed so in the future we'll have a better result, okay? So that's it for me, right on time? Well, right on time. Thank you very much, okay? Appreciate your time. I, I'm, I arrived today and I need to go to London tonight, so I will not stay for the full, but it's, it's a real pleasure for me and as Brazilian, it's for me absolutely fantastic to be in India, okay? In India. Thank you very much, okay? Thank you. So, now back to you, right? So, I don't know the next question is not if you can do it, but if there are any questions that you have. That we also hear, not for you, right? Sorry? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm I'm very fortunate because I love what I do. Then it's easy. Yeah. Then it's easy. Yeah, no, I'm. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe maybe people think because I am Brazilian and this, but you know when when you love what you do, it's very easy. Absolutely. You know, it's it's something that. But if you. What I tell every single person, if you hate what you do, try to find another job. You know, life will become miserable. Right? Please. This is exactly what we are. Let, let me explain to you. Brightline has one year only. So we are very young. 
So um, a lot of things are, are being populated now. So if you go to the web for every day, there is something new there. But it's exactly what we are doing now. It's on how do you execute in a very simple way each of these steps. So this you will find through videos, through the course that will be released in September. So just pay attention. Early September, the Coursera course for free will be released with much more details on, on each of them. Okay? Yes. Yeah, you know, look, everything that is on the website is Creative Commons. You just download, use. If you don't like, you delete. Yeah. It's simple. Huh? Oh, 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 your feedback. Of course, of course. You can share your feedback through our social media and through our email, info at brightline.org. And if you want, you can send to me, ricardo.vargas at brightline.org. For example, yesterday I received a, one feedback about one economist reader that did not like one our last ad because we put a line and we put male and female objects but we put the male on the right then the female the male and the female and she said that it should be in the different order and i respect no but please i respect very much and i told her that our next ad will be different and i already asked her to do so we receive feedback, and, and we would love the feedback, even if you disagree. That, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Okay? One and one. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the case studies are being produced now, and they will be released by the end of April. We'll have six case studies and all of them will become public. If you want, I suggest you follow us on Twitter or, or, or LinkedIn, okay, Brightline org and follow us because every single piece of new content is published there. Every single piece. So when the case study becomes read, because this year there are the case study, Harvard Business Review, the MIT, the DTU, all of this will be public, uh, published between now and we'll publish another book. We publish one called Strategy at Work that you can download on the website. And, and a new one about the human side of this, what I said to you, that will be published in September. Okay, it's a lot of things that are coming up this year. Yeah, look, look, we are not aiming here. Uh, he said, is there any example where strategy was implemented 100%? And uh, my, my answer to you is that I don't know. And probably it does not exist. So what we aim is not 100%. What it, we aim is that instead of 10, you can improve to 30. And instead of 1 million of my first slide, we can reduce it to 100,000, okay, to zero, it's just impossible because there are so many variables, but we can, there is always room for improvement. And now the gap is so massive that everything we do, if we fine turning some aspects, we can reduce dramatically uh, uh, that waste. But 100%, I don't know, but if you know one, please let me know. Uh, uh, no, no. No, 100%, no, none of them. And most of the coalition members, they became coalition members because of the challenges, right? Because of the challenge, because they, they said, we face this, this problem, so how do we fix it? Good. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Enjoy your day.